Hi there, I'm Alex, and today I will unbox, assemble, and paint Olga for my army. This is a special edition miniature that I think is very cool. It will make a fine addition to my Warriors of Chaos army. I like the model a lot as it is, but sadly I have a few rules for the warriors in my army. You have to wear helmets at the workplace. Some of you may not like this, but off with her head. A regular warrior helmet will do, and we will have to imagine that today maybe Holga had a bad hair day. Or something. I play the Ninth Age fantasy battles with my warriors. So we have to substitute the round base for an old school square one. I think I'll use this model as either a unit champion or a hero. And I like the idea of her towering over the others. So I will use some cork to build a little platform. When building with cork like this you want to break off pieces to get a random natural look. The small pieces we use as well and scatter around the big ones. This cork I got from a sheep. What are they called? You put your hot pots and pans on them. Not using her supplied head left a big hole in the shoulder pad, but I filled that with the pin that was supposed to go in there. We'll see when painting if we need to add something else. My plan is to make it look like a ring or something where the cloth thing is connected. I use super glue for the sand as well, just for the speed of it, since I want this model prime today. Otherwise, I'd use PVA glue. I primed my model with the airbrush, and when I had it out, I primed some more minis. And then I started to put down some base coat. I base coated a few more models at the same time, and somewhere in that time my camera turned off. So I have a bit of footage of me priming a couple of Necron warriors and base coating some space marines. But no footage of Helga, except for this, spraying some red on her cloak just before putting down the airbrush for the night. It's now the next day and we begin with the brush. I'm starting with the armor here and we'll just do some edge highlights for now. For the leather and the cloth on the shoulder, I'm going to use a bluish cold grey color. Time for the cloak and I'm starting by mixing a dark red to do some shadows. Keeping it very thin, I glaze it to all the parts of the cloak I want a little darker. 
And then I do the same thing with just red paint to the lighter areas as well. Thin glazes until I reach the result I want. I use a desaturated green color as the contrast and secondary color and use that to paint the wrappings on the weapon and the shield. No special things here, just slab it on. Some simple highlights with the same color but mixed with a bit of ivory. And I almost forgot this sword hilt. I'm not sure but I have painted a few horns red for unit champions in the past and quite like it. And at this point I decided to try it. Yeah, I like it. Let's go with that. Often I make decisions like this as I go rather than having the whole paint job planned. I know the main parts like the brown armor and the gold details and the red cloak, but the rest I mostly decide as I go. And speaking of gold, let's add some gold to those details to see how it looks. What paint do you use for your gold? Or maybe you prefer non-metallic metal? I use um, polished gold by Vallejo. And depending on what I paint, I shade it with either green, red, brown, or just brown. For this model, I think it's gonna be brown, like Agrax Earthshade or something similar. Coming back after a battery break for my camera, and I've done some painting in the meantime. I've hit all the gold with some Agrax, as well as some targeted spots on the armor, and some black washes on a few places. Now I'll do another highlight on the armor, mostly focusing on the face, or uh, the helmet. But also some edges here and there on the rest of the armor to help with contrast and readability. The shoulder cloth thing received a black wash and I think it's time to bring that up again. I used the same colors as before. Time to add some highlights to the gold and the brown wash has both darkened it and got rid of some shine. So I'll just use the same gold paint again and hitting only the edges this time. That will make a nice contrast both in brightness and shine... shininess? Shine. That will bring... that will give a good contrast in shine... Ines. Shineness? Whatever. I add some rust effect on the weapon by stippling it hard with a dry brush with orange. And I do the same thing again with a dark deep red. In the earlier camera battery recharging break, I also washed the shield and gave it a few glazes of blue. But I'm not all that happy with it, so I'm planning to hit it with a green wash again. I tried glazing a pinkish color on the tongue, but I'm not sure I like it. Hmm, maybe if I fill in the teeth a bit, that's better, but I'm still unsure. Let's see how it looks after the green wash. Coming back to it a bit later and I also washed the green wraps on the weapon handle and made a matte brown wash of the weapon and stained the ends of the cloak to make it look dirty and wet. 
I'm still unsure about the shield, and to be honest, I don't particularly like these shields all that much. And that's probably why I'm so unsure about what to do with it. At this stage I felt a lack of contrast, and that something was wrong when I looked at the mini. At that stage it's often a good idea to add some black lining, just to separate the different parts of the model a bit and make it more readable. That often helps a lot, and after black lining we can more clearly see what needs fixing. In this case I needed some more white on the horns and the teeth on the shield and of course some bright edge highlights on the weapon. A few tiny fixes here and there and we'll soon have the result we are looking for. More contrast is almost always the way to go and I add some glazes of red to brighten the most prominent parts of the glow. And doing some control shading with a brown wash where the gold meets the green of the shield. I add some orange and add just a tiny amount on the cloak. We are almost there now, some glazes of red to even that out and I think I'm happy with the cloak. Let's highlight the dirt. Let's quickly paint that base and add some tufts. It looks kind of boring right now, but wait until you get the snow effects on there. I've tried many snow effects for my armies over the years and so far this one, Valhalla and Blizzard, is my favorite. If you not take the price in consideration that is, because it's also the most expensive one. Otherwise, Army Painter's Battlefield Snow is really good and cheap, but you have to mix that with PVA glue, and it's a bit of a hassle. When doing one model like this, I therefore prefer Valhalla and Blizzard. But say I batch painted 10 or 20 models and wanted to put snow on all their bases, or for a terrain feature, then I would of course go for the Army Painter's Snow and PVA mix. And there we are, one painted Holga. Before the grand reveal, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching, and please hit like and subscribe and all those YouTube stuff. I'm always enjoying these kinds of videos when I'm hobbying, and maybe you are too right now. In that case, please let me know in the comments what you are working on. And uh, roll the pictures.